extremely happy he's back. I've celebrated that publicly, but Alex nailed it. Elon is taking the biggest risk here. It takes unlimited energy to propagate lies. You have to continually repeat them and you have to continue to try and falsify information and hide the truth to keep lies afloat. And this simple purchase, you call it simple, the purchase of a simple website has literally cracked the matrix in real time and it becomes extremely difficult now to run the psyops they were previously running and enslave the populace, which is their primary goal. So Elon is a hero, absolutely. And the risks you are taking, Elon, I don't think many people at home actually understand the gravity of the risks you are taking because your ability to speak freely is heavily leveraged against your insignificance. You're only allowed to speak if nobody listens to you. And if you get big and people start listening, they're going to come at you hard. And I think I'm not completely versed, but from what I understand, Elon's already suffering the lawfare tactics, which they're going to do. They're going to keep pulling out the hat to try and slow him down. or, or Oh, stop oh, oh, Andrew, let me interrupt before I forget. I don't want to give any attention. The same law firm that came after me with these PR firms. You've just dropped out, I think, Alex. He's just dropped out? Anyone else can you? Yeah, uh, I think he got a call. Now you got a call. Yeah, go ahead, Alex. There is a three-letter agency running this. Not all of them, but let's just say it starts with a C and it ends with an A. Sorry, go ahead, Andrew. Yeah, absolutely. And there's liberal NGOs which will sponsor agents of the Matrix. They'll sponsor females to end up in a house party and then lie to try and then put you in a Romanian jail cell and get you sitting with the cockroaches in a dungeon. And it's a very scary world where you get to a point where you're t only time trying to tell the truth and they're going to punish you for that using endless lawfare. And this, this battle has only just begun. But the Matrix has truly cracked now and it's going to be extremely hard to lie to us like they did before with X the way it currently is. And I think it came at exactly the right time. I almost, without trying to sound pessimistic, there was a point where I kind of felt like I was losing hope. You couldn't tell the truth about anything. Everything was a lie. Everything from head to toe was a lie. And they're trying to lock us all back in our houses again. And we can finally talk about it. It's truly heroic. And Elon's taking massive risk. And the respect I have for him for doing that is, is, is enormous. Absolutely. I mean, this is what happened. I'm going to shut up. So I want to hear from Elon. But this is so historic. Elon Musk's courage. And it's true. I'm saying has broken the back of the globalists. They'll, they'll never be able to turn this around again unless they have a nuclear war. We, we, Elon Musk has broken their back. Yeah. Well, I guess some people are afraid to die, but I am not. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, and you know what? It's kind of crazy because I was talking to someone the other day and I was explaining. They were asking about my seizure, how they took all my houses, all my money, all my cars, blah, blah. And I said, you never truly own anything on this earth anyway. You can have a piece of paper that says you own it. But if you piss off the government structures, they just get a judge to stamp a different piece of paper and you no longer own it. The only thing you own is your soul and your integrity. And this is the one thing they cannot take away from you no matter what they do to you. And that is the best feeling on earth. It doesn't matter if you can sell your soul to the devil and repeat what they want you to say. But then you truly own nothing. And yeah, I think I that as, as history books look back on this pivotal moment when X was finally freed and the information of the world could finally be spoken freely, I really do believe we're on the right side of history. And if you were to ask me if there's anything worth dying for, it would be for the freedom of humanity and to be on the right side of history. So I agree with you absolutely, Elon. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, well, I, 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 I'm just generally in favor of civilization and the furtherance of civilization. Um, and I think we should always be concerned that uh, we can regress as a civilization and if you if you study history you just you, you just see the the arc of, of one civilization after another as the civilizations rise and fall through history um we've, we've been in a period of civilization rising very rapidly but we should be concerned that it it, it may we may we may be cresting we may subside um and and, and there are, i have to there are many times where i, have, I get late stage civilization vibes um you know, and I'm just worried that that maybe we're cresting as a civilization and and perhaps headed for for a fall. So, yeah. Well, I agree with you because I I truly believe, and a lot of people have ever said this before me. This is not original idea, but I think as AI and machines and tech increases, a lot of people are going to be deemed useless by the overlords. And then you have to sit and decide what are they going to do with all these people who have hopes and dreams and they want health care and they want a garden and they want a house to live in and they don't want to be treated like cattle. They're going to become extremely inconvenient. So I don't think many people at home understand that this war cannot be avoided. I've had a lot of people who understand why they threw me in jail in Romania and understood I've done nothing wrong. And they said to me, why do you take up this fight? Why you don't just delete your Twitter and disappear and drive a Ferrari all day? And I explained that this war cannot be avoided. You're either on the front line and you're fighting for something or you're sitting waiting to die. You're waiting for the Mongol horde to come over the horizon and chop your head off. There's, no, I totally no agree. Out of it. And just to throw this in there, if you read, and Elon, 
I knew you were doing great work. When I saw you six months ago at the World Government Summit, where they're all just saying we're going to make everybody eat bugs and we'll make the decisions to put microchips in them, and you said, we don't want a centralized system. We want a diverse system. We want firewalls. And I don't agree with this Tower of Babel you're building. They know that we go through cycles and they want to artificially create a great reset collapse in their own words to make everybody else poor, consolidate power, and they'll have a smaller type two civilization for themselves. And I think you're trying to build a type two civilization or even a type one civilization, I should say, uh, for all of us. And, right. and you said we, we need to have a debate about we need to have a debate about uh, going interstellar. We've got to expand yeah. or we collapse. And Elon Musk is saying, correct me if I'm wrong, we, you don't stay in stasis. You either expand right. or you collapse. So yes, you're exactly. Oh, you, 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 either like, grow, you either grow or, you're, or, you, or you collapse. You, you, you're, you, you don't, the steady state is, is basically an impossibility. So you have to pick it. You have to pick, make a choice. Do you, you want to grow civilization uh, or, or do you want to decline and, and collapse? And because you know, it's steady state is it's not stable. So, and I say we grow, and I say we expand, and 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 we 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 have more humans, and we become a multi-planet species and a space-faring civilization, and ultimately be out there among the stars. And I think that is the the, the exciting, inspiring thing for, for the future, uh, n not a declining human civilization that dwindles to nothingness and, and and where humanity dies with a whimper. And that's the bottom line. I think it is the battle of people who believe in humans and humanity and want it to expand against people who are so selfishly going through the earth and so selfishly orientated that they don't care about expanding civilization. They just want to control the humans that are currently here. And, and Andrew, uh, I totally it's, it's agree with you. And an I, arrogance. I totally agree. But let me throw this caveat on it because I've read the writings of Bill Gates and Klaus Schwab and the Club of Rome. They know we could easily expand. There's plenty of room, hundreds of billions of known galaxies. They know that, that this is just a seed that's going to not just grow into one giant oak, but an entire forest, an entire universe. And so they want to shut everybody else down because they can't deal with competition from the Elon Musk that come out of the general public. They want a global tyranny so they can direct it and control it so that they direct the expansion. And we can't let that happen because they literally talk about it in Agenda 21, the official UN plan, a 90% world population. So we need to go with the Elon Musk plan and that's why I tell people that get upset, they go, Elon Musk is involved in every advancing technology. The globalists are pushing that too. Well, technology is like a gun. It's whose hand it's in. And so we need the gun in the people's hands, the gun of expansion, instead of in the globalist hands. And so just because Elon Musk is on the cutting edge of every technology, don't fear the technology like some troglodyte. Fear us not being in control of it. And Elon is saying we need it to be an expansionary human explosion of competition and freedom, not some new dark age with a tiny breakaway civilization that's only working for itself. Sorry, I'm ranting. No, no, but you're completely right, because if, if Elon doesn't push these boundaries, they will push these boundaries. And once they have the sole control and the monopoly over such technologies, it's over for all of us. And I don't think most people understand. It simply is the humanistic view against the death cult view. And there's people in the world who have yes. no interest in they have no interest in growing humanity, no interest in advancing the species as a whole. Their interest is in power sure. and control. And all they want to do is have absolute power over the people that currently exist and their children. And you can talk about all the perverse reasons they want to do those exact things. But it's truly scary. And all the people at home who don't really understand the gravity of this fight, they seem to think it's right wing, left wing, ha ha ha. Yes, exactly. They're, they're, see, they're, they're thinking about it the wrong way. It's, it's, <laughs> sorry, I just got a little X here. Um, uh, but, but you're totally, exactly. Mm -hmm. this, this right, left, is, it's, it's the wrong way to think about it. It's, it's uh, the, the sort of the extinctionist versus the pro-humans. Uh, and once you see that it's extinctionist versus the, 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 the human, the, the pro-humans, then it, it becomes very clear. So, Elon, when are you going to, I know you got a hundred irons in the fire, but I've really, when you talk about we need to create a, a plan B for humanity, well, that's really... No, it's not, it's not a plan B. An alternate master plan, because the globalists oh. are controlled right now. You're trying to wrest control with us, helping. I mean, well, when, when are you going to put out your battle plan, or, or are you already putting it out of pieces? No, I mean, I mean what, what I'm saying is that actually I, I think we, 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 should, we should expand humanity, uh, like basically we should have basically more, more kids, uh, you know, we, we, population should increase, uh, and, and, and we should uh, become a, a multi-planet species and, uh, and, and, you know, make life multi-planetary, build a self-sustaining um, civilization on Mars, and, and, and then ultimately, you know, this will be 
long after I'm dead, uh, probably, but uh, well, almost certainly, uh, we, we can go to other star systems and, and go out there and, I don't know, maybe we'll find some long dead alien civilizations. Um, and I don't, I don't think we want to be one of those lame one planet civilizations that never got beyond, you know, its home planet. Um, I mean, we're going to, you know, you know, what are the aliens going to think of that? <laughs> it's like, we, we, we got to make a good showing. Team human. Well, let's yeah, go. And that would, absolutely. LFG. That would be certainly disappointing. <laughs> but so, but it's, 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 it's essential. And, and truthfully, it's so amazing we didn't even speak about these things. Only two years ago, you couldn't even speak about these subjects. But it's so pertinently obvious to anyone who pays attention. And it is scary. And, and, and expansion and humanistic views are certainly the way to progress. And it has to be done. There's no other way. Just like a business, just like you guys said, if you stand still, you die. And uh, it takes a few brave people to to break the matrix. You have to break the dam. And I think bravery is so important because it puts a crack in the dam. And it shows that if there's people out there brave enough to risk getting canceled, risk lawsuits, risk lawfare, then it's going to inspire bravery amongst the rest of the populace. And it becomes extremely hard to lie to brave people. And and I think that that's one of the largest pandemics of Earth today is bravery. And when I say bravery, I don't mean that in any kind of negative connotation. Bravery is is being full of love and loving the people around you and sticking up for your community and loving where you live and loving your country. And it's brave to do those things. And it's love. What are the globalist teachers? Children are bad. We're ugly. Humans create you know all this racial division. They want us to hate each other, so we just yeah. give up, roll over, so the globalists can have the future. I would just yeah, like to I say think here, the globalists are, are short-sighted too, because the, the, the thing is that you can't really separate yourself from civilization. So I think th- those those who are sort of advocating, like like it's re- it's really, it, it, I think it's just logical to be pro-civilization. You don't actually necessarily have to be altruistic. You just have to think long term and say, obviously, you cannot exist in any in any good way without civilization i mean just look at watch one episode of naked and afraid and see how much you want to go live in a forest by yourself um well, we're, it's, we're it's, in a very it's we're not in a fun. very we're in a super <laughs> pivotal moment now and the reason we're in a pivotal moment is because the machines cannot do the policing as of yet my brother and i often True. talk about how bad covid would have been if they had terminator machines you didn't have your mask on you couldn't even appeal to the empathy of the person who knew how insane it all was as soon as the yeah. machines control the policing it's absolutely over and we're not that far away so we're in a very pivotal period now where the bravery that's required to resist the globalist oppression has to happen now soon the technology absolutely... will exist and it's I over for agree. everybody we we are we are at a critical critical crossroads right now in the entire future of the human destiny, and, and and I call it Plan B, but I mean, Elon, what do you call it? Just an alternate plan for humanity? Because we can have a debate because, because the Black Rocks and the globalists are right now in control. They, they were 100% control. You you and others have helped rest it to maybe they're in 80% control. They're losing control very quickly as people discover what they're doing. But wh- what would you call the debate and discussion about a pro-human future? Just team humanity? Yeah, team humanity. Absolutely. That sounds like, That sounds good. Um, but I, you know, I think like something that's, that that is really important is is like you just literally have to have kids, or there's no there's no next generation. I mean, I, Alex, do you, do you have kids? Yes, I do. I'm not as prolific as you, but I wish I was. It's the best thing in my life. I have four. Okay, great. And and Andrew, I do have a few. I won't let you down, Elon. I'm coming. I'm okay, coming good. to take over your title. I'm coming <laughs> to take over. I'm doing my best. You know, I I okay. gotta use my good looks for something. Well, I think we I think we I think we ought to encourage people to to you know. Uh, have kids and um and 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 this is the bottom line argument this is what is so important we just talked about how the globalists are ultimately selfish and only care look at most most of the globalists don't have children and of course because they're selfish you you guys guys are all attacking the globalists but if you ask a globalist like i have friends who would i would consider globalists you ask them their ideologies are aligned that they believe that somebody living across the world is just as valuable as somebody who lives in America. And I know, you know, there's They've already enslaved the third world and then they're using them as... No, but that's not how everybody who you would categorize as... No, you're right. There's a lot of useful idiot globalists. But the globalists at the top are depopulationists. That's their religion. So so maybe if you want to look at the top, you can say globalists at the top. Some of them might have that view. But, you know, if you just talk to an ordinary person who views themselves as a globalist they're not saying oh you know i'm evil i'm they're, they're not an evil person they just have this belief that every every per, human being around the globe is equal 
That's that's. I would call that an internationalist. So, that's an internationalist. A globalist wants one world government run by corporations. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I, I think you can label them differently, but I think if you talk to somebody, well, Henry Kissinger gonna... was a globalist. Zbigniew Brzezinski was a globalist. I'm not trying to be mean to you, but their their number one rule is the Earth is too small. We can't expand. We've got a bean count and put everybody on rations. We've got a social engineer and in the normal human program because humans are failed. And they want to turn us into factory farm humans. Those well, are a lot of survivors. I, I, yeah, I'll, I'll answer the question. Well, I'll answer the question. Sorry, quickly. guys. If, if, I, if we can just say, like, so some of these titles are a little confusing. If, so, if, someone's, if say someone's an internationalist or a globalist, I, I think where what, what can achieve some disambiguation here is to say, like, it, does, does someone have as an axiomatic belief that there are too many people on the Earth, or do they not? Do they, have a, do they believe that the Earth can sustain the current population, or do they think it cannot? Now, the, the reality is Earth can actually uh, handle a, a human population probably 10 times larger than the current yes. population. Earth is actually very sparsely populated by humans. We only see density because if we're in a, in, in an, uh, a dense urban environment like New York or, or Boston, London or something like that. Um, but if, 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 like, here would be like a good test. If, if you took a plane from LA to New York and you try to drop a bowling ball and hit somebody, you, your chances of success are basically zero. You, you'd have to drop 10,000 bowling balls, maybe. <laughs> yes. You, you, you just, the, 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 and, and I'll, I'll tell you sort of something that, that may, may, may scare people a little bit is that th there are thousands of objects falling onto Earth from space all the time. But how often do you hear about someone, someone actually getting hit by falling right. uh, by, by meteorites? Absolutely. Right. There's one known case of a woman at her house getting hit by one. I, I, Elon, yeah. I, I, want, I want to just respond to Ed, actually, for a second, because, again, when it comes, I, want to, I, think, I think it's good to get a good counter view here. I think that there's two different things going on, Ed. I know what you're, I know what you're trying to say, but there's a separate point about your obligations, right? So you can – and I believe – a lot. Everything has been said about the importance of expansionism for humanitary for humanity being pro civilization and expansion pro human race to win. That's like a separate axis, though, from saying where are your obligations where you are. Right. So we talked about procreation and family. Then we talked about the nation. Well, look, I'm I have two kids. As a father, my moral obligation, I believe, is first and foremost to my family, and then let's say as a president. My moral obligation is to the citizens of the nation that I lead. And then you can worry about hunger in the Congo or whatever else needs to happen in the Darfur or, or in other places. And so I don't think that you're saying necessarily that that life... Charity begins at home. Charity exactly. And that's not saying that that life abroad is any less valuable inherently. And so when you say like the globalist view is that all it's saying is that all life is equal wherever it is on earth, it's not like I think the view... An alternative view is countering that. There's also just a separate place in terms of where you're situated. Where's your obligation? Right? Is as a as a father, it's to your family. As a president, it's to your country. And just because you believe that's the hierarchy of your obligations means somebody else is a leader of one of those other countries, and that's an obligation that they have too. But that's like a different discussion. Well, the neoliberals, yep. they, the neoliberals, in their own PR, they're the ones doing the worst things on the earth. They just say, oh, we want global government because we want to give Africa's representation. Then they lock them down for three years and starve 30 million of them to death and then organize them to flood us as a, as a political underclass. This is cold-blooded Henry Kissinger State Department memorandum 200. I mean, yeah. they've got... I, 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 it, I, it, it's not black and I white. I think it's two though, different right? conversations. But what is black and... Wait, what but is, can, can what, we what just... Is, I'm, I'm sorry. What is black oh, go ahead, you, Andrew. Go ahead, Andrew, and then we'll go to Dave. Andrew? Okay. What, what, what I do believe is black and white is simply, if you read a history book, you'll see the worst things that humanity have ever done have been do done with good intentions. That's what's so bad about evil acts, is that people Road think they're hell. doing the right thing. And that's the most dangerous thing about it. And this idea that they look at all human life as sacred and all the same, I actually disagree. I think the reason they will prioritize people in a third world country, for example, you'll say it's because they see us as equal. I think it's because they see us now as spoilt and annoying. They don't like that we need pensions and living space and healthcare. They simply want slaves and a robot class and they'll do anything it takes to get it and they'll get it from anywhere they can. And when someone comes along and says, well, my intentions are good. I'm not interested in that because you can name any Holocaust or any atrocity in, in history. The people didn't think they were the bad guys. They often thought they were the, the good guys. And I guess the easy way to look at life is you want, you want to be having as many children as possible. You want to 
pray, other people do the same, and you want those people to enjoy freedom. And anyone who's coming along restricting speech, restricting access to certain things, restricting movement, restricting, all they're doing is trying to restrict so they can control. And nobody in a history book ever who did that either was the good guy. I think it's very clear to see who's on the right side of history and who isn't. And I advocate freedom for everybody. If I had disagreed with absolutely everything Alex said, I'd still be glad he's back on on, on X and these people can't even handle a different opinion. Do you think they're going to allow the people of a different opinion to them to share water or share food or share anything else? Once they And the reason control? they don't want another opinion is they want to misrepresent what Elon Musk or Andrew Tate or Vivek Ramaswamy or any of, I'm telling you, they want us silenced so they can lie about what we, what we said. Yeah. I have a quick question. I have a quick question. We'll, we'll go, Jackson, I'm going to go to you right after uh, Dave. Yeah, yeah, right. I, I mean, I'm just saying, I, I agree that with you there. I think that a lot of the media and a lot of these platforms do want to silence voices because they want their voice to be heard louder. So, yeah, I, I definitely hear you there. I, I definitely don't. I definitely, as when it comes to global globalists, I think, you know, it's not black and white. You're not either a globalist or you're not. I think people fall in between and they have, there's different reasons for why people might feel one way about one you know, you could say globalist idea and another. So, so I, I mean, I, I don't like painting people like, you know, in, with a black and white pen because I, I feel that everybody falls somewhere in the middle. Can, All can I, I just know say, is this, but, that there are people that want a corporate world government whose aim is depopulation and not giving the general public access to technology by lying about resources and, 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 and literally saying carbon dioxide that plants breathe is evil and then telling us the world's going to end in 2030 and the ice caps are all going to melt. And, and none of that's true. So our children basically give up on the future and decide not to have children. That's all I'm saying. And Elon Musk is promoting an optimistic pro-human future that the science and evidence shows is real and that we need. Gentlemen, I have to yeah, go. Yeah, I, I just, I just okay. want to be sort of, uh, yeah, exactly. I want to be clear about Please, my position. I'm, I'm super pro-human and I mean all humans. Uh, you know, humans in America, humans in Somebody's Africa, got their thing Asia, open and everywhere Somebody else. Somebody's got their phone open in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, Vivek, Vivek, that's, that's your phone, Vivek. I'm not able to mute you. Vivek, uh, perfect. <laughs> Go ahead, Elon. Um, Sorry about that. So, um, <laughs> well, I hope you feel better. I now. feel great. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Uh, so, um, yeah, uh, you know, I'm super pro-human like, for, 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 for Team Humanity here, and um, and I just think we want to make sure that people have a positive view of the future. And, and in, like, I think I, I encounter a lot of people who, who have actually very pessimistic conclusions about the future. Um, and and if, you say, if, you, if you try to unpack that and say, where does that pessimism come from? Um, and, and, and I think, like, these are, like, you know, good people. Like, they have, they, they have good intentions. I think they, they, they think about things that often come from is believing that, the, that, that, that there are too many humans on the planet. This is false. Earth can easily sustain far more than the current population, um, and and but but they've been told this this thing and they've believed it and it is it is false. Um, I'm, I'm going to sign I, out. I'm very, very pro environment. Obviously, Bye, Andrew. I, I, I might have done more about more. You know, I'm certainly I, I might have done more. You know, for sustainable energy than than maybe any single human. Um, so I you know it, it, I would consider myself an environmentalist, but I but I also believe in in, in physics and and reality and. Um, and not and not sort of being alarmist about things. Um, and, and well, I'll, something you said was really smart. And I've because I've seen the equations. I'm not a mathematician or rocket scientist like you, but we need the fossil fuels to get to the new technologies. And that is true. Out. You can't yes. cut them all off and then not have it. To, they're they're blowing up the bridge that gets them there. Yes. Yes. And I would like what I would I, like I, to say. Yeah, right, my you. final my final point. I would like to say. I often get asked by people who follow me, they say, who do you think who controls the world? Who do you think the matrix is? And I use the matrix as a very simple way to explain that they purport a false version of reality that everyone buys into to keep your mind occupied so they can extract your body heat from you for the soulless machines, which are essentially, essentially the globalists we're talking about. And I try and say that I still believe that we run the world. There's a lot more of us than them. We still control the world. It's just down to what we will accept and what will allow them to do to us. And that's why bravery is so essentially and so essential and so important. And I know I can come across as brash with my message. No, but no, no you're telling, not. You stop when I'm telling 16 year olds, when I'm telling 16 year olds to go and get rich and buy a fast car and train hard and go to the gym, et cetera, because these young men are far less likely to blindly comply. And it's extremely important that they don't sigh off the next generation of, of ma young masculine youth. And, and that's why the still, system was scared of you, Andrew, because you were doing it version of it to shock them out of it to show them how to have a destiny how to have desire how to want to be into the future 
And then that's well, the same thing in a different you're, way. You're, 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 you're right. We still control the world, and it's down to what we will accept, and it's going to take bravery and love. You need to love the people around you and love the human race and love the place you're from. And I just want to wrap up by saying that I would never kill myself. And if they put me back in that dungeon to starve, I hope you will all do your very best to get me out because I'm in a very We will, Andrew. Love situation. you. Can I just throw something out because I'm going to talk to Elon Musk here and everybody else. And this is surreal. Andrew Tate and Vivek Ramaswamy. This is crazy. John, um, uh, uh, I've got a friend I want to get on. We also have uh, Mark Dice, who's really, really stood up for free speech. He's on the line. If he can get a question. I'm going to leave Alex, in. but I just want to say welcome on Twitter. And uh, I think there will be more truth than not. <laughs> all else equal. So hail to the Thank truth. You, gentlemen. Take Thank it you easy, guys. Much. Bye-bye. Thank you, Vivek. Bye. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Vivek. <laughs> I, I, have one, I have one quick question. Um, all right, Jack. So I guess the the premise as to why Alex was banned for for so long was that, you know, he supposedly lied about an atrocity and that goes against ex community guidelines. Uh, that, that's actually not that's not quite correct. The the, the at least obviously this, I, this was before, um, you know, uh, the, I acquired the company. Uh, but the the actual reason for suspending him was um, he, he basically insulted a journalist. I, uh, well, was, that, that wasn't was, wasn't like was not, your, your purpose for keeping him? Well, still he believed banned? that because the media had said that. Now he's learned that, right? I, I'm no, just going I, off I, of I, what I well, just looked at. I just looked at the the the, 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 the logs for reason for suspension. That was was a, a, basically a third strike violation. The third strike violation was um, uh, insulting a journalist. I, yeah, it, this is literally this is this is this was not my decision. This is literally the Twitter logs of the old people that used to run Twitter. This is what yeah, they I get. I guess what I'm saying is, like, under your leadership, though, the the suspension was kept in place. I remember you tweeted out because you're not going to bring someone back who lied about, you know, the death of innocent children. Yeah. Uh, so if that if that's the case, then and and we're going to uphold things fairly and firmly for all X users. Um, can we ins- can we expect that, like, if Alex or anyone else on this panel lied about? Sandy Hook or an atrocity again that they would also be banned again? Um, he already answered that. Yeah, I've already he did, answered yes, that. He did, it, yeah. It, it just and if that, the okay, so, that, so that, if, if that if that is the case, if that is the case, the platform will, that, will adhere on. to the law, and and we will adhere to the law. That is that is what this platform will do. Um, so if somebody says does does something illegal, then they they will be suspended. Uh, if they if they do not do something illegal, then um, they, they may. They, they may. We will try our best to avoid any any kind of permanent bans unless someone does something fundamentally illegal. Um, Elon, I don't know. We don't. I don't. We're, we don't have we're, 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 we're trying. We're just trying to stay true to the Constitution of the United States in the United, in America and and the laws of the country as decided by the citizens. Elon, in the how, how are you? Go ahead, Alex. And Elon, way more interesting. And I just asked one question of Elon. Elon, uh, it, it's it's great having you here in Texas. You're kicking ass. You're 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 Texas through and through. Your whole spirit. We love you. Uh, whatever happens with Trump down the road, should we change the Constitution so you can run for president? Would you ever think about that? I I, I would like to stay as a technologist uh, and and build rockets and electric cars and you know things that technologies that hopefully uh, have a, a good effect on the world and advanced civilization. That would be my preference. Um, I, I would not like to be president, uh, so that would I would, <laughs> I would I would just like to build things that are uh, further civilization. That's that, that's, that, that's, smart, that's I, my I mean, goal. I think that's a smart. I think that's a smart answer. Are you concerned if the deep state establishment? We know it's not just one group is able to uh, kill Trump or or not let him run for office for the repercussions. I mean, are, are you optimistic for the future currently? Or, or just how do you feel about the election coming up? Well, I think it will not be a boring year. That's for sure. Um, I think we're, it's going to be it's going to be eventful. I suspect. I I, I don't know. You, you seem to be quite concerned that people will try to assassinate uh, Trump, but I, I don't know. Uh, I, I I mean, I'm obviously, in, I'm 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 against against assassination generally. So you know, um, and I guess if Hitler was alive, I'd be in favor of assassinating him. But you know, but. Or, you know, Stalin, you know, that kind of thing. I would you know, be too, but your attitude yeah. is um. <laughs> you can sell the world on freedom and, and, and humanity 2.0 and a new renaissance, the establishment will just step aside because our ideas are so good. Is that what you're saying? Look, I, I think what I'm saying is that I think it is very, it is very difficult to predict the future. Um, that 
we're, we're certainly going to have a very contentious uh, election and, and perhaps some contentious elections worldwide. Um, the X platform will strive to be as uh, as truthful as possible about what's going on um, and to, you know, that, that's, that's going to be the goal. Um, and, you know, SpaceX is going to build rockets and Tesla is going to build cars and, um, you know, as for what will happen, in, I, I mean, I, I don't know what's going to happen, but I think Matt, is there any it's, big 2024 is going to be quite the encore for 2023 is my suspicion i know you've talked about incredible jets you want to invent some other things is there any other big invention you've got on the drawing board in the back of your mind that you haven't announced to the world that you want to tell people about today <laughs> no no uh this would not be the forum for announcing uh any new products or technologies um <laughs> so I mean, the, the, we, we do have, um, you know, the, the Neuralink chip, which I know some people might be concerned about, but that, 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 that's, that's really something that will take a, lo a, a very long time to, you know, be in any kind of widespread use. We've got the first use, the first, the first patient will, will get a Neuralink chip. This is a quadriplegic, and, and, and it will enable them to control their computer and their, their phone. Um, and, and then, hey, you know. My uncle was in a motorcycle accident. And for and was about and he was having seizures for about to die couldn't even walk he got one it's not one of your brain chips but a brain yeah, chip yeah. and actually he, he can walk and talk and is happy now so well, yeah. that's not bad exactly exactly so uh, I mean it's, it's the, the regular the regulatory stuff on this is is very intense um so the, but but the, the first one will have you know you could think of it sort of like like a telepathy you you can sort of um, control your computer and phone just by thinking um, so it's like it's kind of like telepathy. And then the, the 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 one after that will be I don't know we're trying to think of a name for it, but you can think of it like blind sight. Um, even if somebody has lost both eyes or, or lost the optic nerve and is completely blind, um, we can actually uh, give them some amount of eye, of sight. Um, or that. ultimately, I think high high resolution sight, kind of like Doherty LaForge from Star Trek. Uh, you could actually see in, in multiple wavelengths. You could see like ultraviolet and infrared and even see radar if you want. And, and by the way, people um, that don't know, Elon's not lying. Even in MIT papers, they've actually done tests. They actually That's what they say, though, is I know you, the problem is just narrowing the site to our bandwidth. They say these people see everything, right? Like a full spectrum. Yeah, you can, you can have a, it's a point at which you have a camera. You can have a camera that can receive photons, photons of, of many wavelengths. So you could see, um, you know, in, even at, in darkest night, um, and you can see ultraviolet, you can see infrared, like I so said, you can even see radar if you want. Um, so, wow. you know, it would be a kind of thing that would, uh, like, uh, it was probably trademarked something, but I think blindside is a cool name for, for it. Uh, it's like, beautiful. you know, yeah. Can we get one question from Mark Dice, because this is the best interview ever. Mark Dice is a great journalist. He stood up for me for the last five years when nobody else would. Mark, a quick question from Mark, please. Uh, a comment, really, uh, just to reinforce to everybody listening, all the journalists, and thank you, by the way, Elon, for unmute, for unbanning Alex for everything that you're doing for the platform, for humanity. But I just want to reinforce, and I'm glad you retweeted this, Alex, the reason why Twitter cited Alex being banned, contrary to popular belief, not because he entertained some conspiracy theories about Sandy Hook, as crazy as they were, and Elon just confirmed that the Twitter logs said this. He... It was, he confronted Oliver Darcy, a public figure on public property, when he was working in the capacity of a journalist, and they cited that as But Mark, that's old so, news. Let's move on from Alex Jones. Well, We're talking thing, to Elon Musk. What's your question for Elon well, Musk? You know, I didn't see the Twitter file. In the Twitter files, can you release data about the choices that were made regarding the trending list? Because the trending list drives the news cycle, as you know. And they can create a self-fulfilling prophecy by manually inserting topics in there, getting people to talk about them. It becomes a topic. It becomes news. Did I miss that in the Twitter files or was that just not released? I would like more data on the manipulation of the trending list uh, to manipulate the news cycles over the previous ownership. Yeah. Um, well, there, there, there was a significant manipulation of the trending list. Um, and uh, yeah, it's worldwide. Um, I mean, you can just, I, I, I'd say like as a general rule of thumb, whatever conspiracy theory you've got about Twitter is probably true, even more true than you think it is. Um, Are you taking so precautions? Now, it, no, go ahead. Yeah, I think, I think, well, I think, I think the, the path to, uh, you know, having a sort of a clean system is maximum transparency. 
Um, so that's why, like, for community notes, the software for community notes is completely open source. You can see every line. The data for com community notes is completely open source. You can see the data, you can see the, the logic, and you can, and you can independently create the, the, the community note conclusion. Um, so you can tell right away if there's uh, manipulation. And, and, this, and there's always going to be some, with these things, it, 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 is, it is not black or white. It's, there's always going to be some degree of, of manipulation uh, but you just want to try to create, have, put as much sunlight on it. As I say, sunlight's the best disinfectant. You want to uh, have it be as clear and transparent as possible. This will minimize the amount of uh, manipulation. Um, so the more visible something is, the, the, the less it is in the shadows, the, 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 the cleaner it will, will get. It will not be perfect, but it will be much better than, any, than something that is hidden. One other point I hope that you're making precautions for the possibility of X being banned from the App Store, using it as a save to home screen type of a feature, as you know, that's probably a very real possibility over the next 12 months. But one other thing here, and again, appreciate your time. I would also um, just just politely ask that the InfoWars account and Owen Schroer and Rob Dew, uh, their employees of Alex, be unsuspended. They were lumped in with that initial suspension. And maybe I think it's time. I do believe CNN violated the terms of service of harassment. They posted a video a while ago, years ago, showing them harassing a poor old lady because she shared something on Facebook that originated from Russia. And you can see on the house, they're shown up to her front yard, you can actually see her address, uh, the number plate right on her house. And that's still on Twitter. So, But Mark, let's not become this. Um, let's just <laughs> yeah, Thank you, Mark. exactly. No, I just kind of want to troll, troll them, give them tapes to their own. Well, I, but anyway, I, mean, I, do, I do want to be clear that that uh, you know, you know, uh, doxing, which includes revealing the pseudonym of of someone. Um, so I want to be clear. Sometimes some publications have claimed that that revealing the pseudonym of someone is not doxing when it obviously is, will result in at least a temporary suspension. We will be very reluctant to give permanent suspensions, but we will give temporary suspensions for any kind of doxing activity uh, or anything that endangers the, the health of another person in a, in a, in a meaningful way. Um, so, and so that it's includes like major publications. Like that it, it does not matter who you are. Uh, it doesn't matter how big you are or, or small. That, that, I should say this, this. There is one. We do have a UN exclusion rule, which is that if, if, uh, if, it's, a major, if it's a head of state recognized by the UN, even if they say things that are, you know, kind of crazy, which they do, then we, we don't suspend a head of state um, just for the same reason that the UN good, allows heads of state to say crazy things at the UN assembly. But because I think we need to hear, we need to hear, we need to hear that. Need to hear what everybody has to say. I was just going to ask, I guess you don't like Nikki Haley's idea of basically doxing everyone? No, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, so that's, that's crazy. Mar look, the, the thing is that a lot of people obviously would face repercussions uh, from their employer or, for, or from their government. Or, or from some organization, if their identity is revealed, and that would that that therefore inhibits the public dialogue. Um, so uh, people, you know, there, there, there have been professors who've been suspended for for just for favoriting things on on old Twitter. They literally got suspended for just tapping a favorite button. Um, this is so, so you can say like, look, if if a tenured profession professor can get a get suspended from their job for just liking a, a post on the X platform, then obviously there is, a, there's, there is some need for um, a, you know, people to be able to post things anonymously. Otherwise, they simply will not be able to speak their mind. Absolutely. They're losing their job. It's anti-whistleblower, but I just want to say this, because I think the community knows it's the best thing ever. Even if somebody says something really horrible, I think there should be some buffer zone to at least let them respond as much as they can before they get banned. Because what I see everywhere is the PR firms will say somebody has said something they didn't say. They create this woke mob response. Then the person's taken down. And then most of the time, it's not even true what was claimed. General? Yeah. Anyway, we're, we're very much going to are on the side of, um, of freedom of speech, which is really just saying, um, you know, in America, we're going we're gonna to uphold the Constitution of the United States. And that's... Uh, that's what we're going to do and uphold the laws of the country. And, and if, if the laws are changed, we will we'll then change our behavior to match the laws. And we'll do so. And we also can only match the laws in other countries because sometimes people will say, well, why don't you do demand freedom of speech in, you know, some other country in the world? I'm like, well, we don't make the laws in that country. And, and if, if, we, if we don't adhere to the laws of the country, they will simply cut us off. Um, and so, you know, we can't do more than that. Uh, 
So that's what, we're basically. What, 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 what about what about the other factors, Elon? Before going to General Flynn, uh, you've got obviously laws, but you have got the the, the 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 revenue still running a business, and you've got external pressure. How do you balance all these when fighting for free speech? Well, we're we're, we're gonna uh, obviously favor free speech. I believe my action has been very clear in this regard. Um, that uh, if it is a choice between money and freedom, we will pick freedom. General. Yeah, it's, hey, uh, thank you, Mario. Thanks for uh, for hosting this thing. You're doing a wonderful job. This is really uh, a, a question for uh, Alex and Elon, uh, a statement. And I wish Andrew and Vivek were still on. But you know, we've array, we've talked about these different sort of array of of forces between you know the globalists and the humanists or whatever whatever the, the, the right descriptors are. Yeah, you know, what I would really like to see, and and I would love to hear Vivek's take on it because he's such I think he's such a wonderful debater. Um, I'd like to know if, if there's a possibility to uh, set up a intellectual debate between, you know, the Alex Jones, Elon Musk, Andrew Tate, Vivek, probably throw Tucker in there. Maybe there's Joe, Joe Rogan against uh, a debate, an intellectual debate against the, the, you know, the Klaus Schwab's, uh, the Bill Gates's of the world. And then there's others. They won't do it because we'll kill them. Well, but, but, but see, I, well, but see, I, but see, I, I, I disagree. I mean, I, this is how we fight today, right? We, we are fighting in an information domain. We, we Andrew, uh, you know, I wish he was still on because I'd love to hear his take. Because, you know, Andrew start, starts to imply, and there's a lot of people that imply this, you know, we're going to move to something that we don't want to, a place that we don't want to be because of this, this, frankly, what I see is a globalist takeover. And I'm all with you, Alex, and you and I have talked about this a lot. But what I would really like to see is an intellectual debate and, and, uh, and a challenge, you know, <laughs> I mean, otherwise, because 2024 is going to be for the for the United States is going to be a historically consequential moment in uh, in history, and and I would prefer that we extraordinary session that I've been listening to for the last couple of hours here, and I would really like to hear at least Alex because you're, you're on, and I think Elon's still on. What, what do you think about setting up some type of intellectual debate, or at least array the, the on, on X, you know, on X, yeah, while doing it through space, well, on on like X, this. yeah, on X or. Uh, or however, yeah, I, I would love to see them come on X to do this because well, this would well, be well, wonderful. Well, would you, would you, would Alex, Alex, would you be open, you and Elon, would you be open for such a debate? Well, well let me just throw this in because I'm, I'm chomping the bit here and then Elon will take over. It should be on X. Uh, they had the last Republican debate and it had like 5 million viewers. This is going to have 50 million viewers. We keep acting like dinosaur media even still matters. It should only be held on X. And, 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 and I would love to see it in this format or with an added video uh, component to it. Yes. We, yes. We, we, we challenge, are, we're, challenge we're their space intellectual space, ideas. Way, so. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Coming it's, soon. It's, it's and that's space. that's my point. That's my point. Yeah. We have to What's challenge their it's, intellectual it's, arguments. Yeah, uh, and, I, I, I agree with the general. What's the bigger debate? Hold on, Laura. I was just going to say that from a future standpoint, we are working on adding video to spaces. So it'll just be a simple thing where you can turn video on or off, and and then whoever's speaking at the video will switch to them, just like if it's a. I guess like a group call or something like that. Oh wow! Um, so that that I think will help. Uh, you know, because it's, it's it's helpful to see people's body language as they as they speak. It's you, you, it conveys more information if you can see their face and their their body language if they wish exactly. to. Exactly. Um, when when so, do you think when do you think that will when do you think that will? Um, we're we're I think we're we're hopeful of we hope, hope we hope to release that functionality um, before the end of the year, but certainly by early next year. Huge. Well, that's a big technological that's announcement. A, that's a big one. That's big. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll go to CJ. But... That's very big. So that's pretty, pretty <laughs> okay, big, <then>. frankly. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, so it'll uh, be cool, I think. Yeah. Well, it's, it's just fascinating how far spaces. I remember being on spaces since the early days, pre Elon, to see how far it's gone and, and to be able to have discussions like this. I don't think the audience understands. There's never been any platform where, where voices from, from all sides, voices that were censored before, were all speaking uh, in one place. Oh, let's be uh, clear. I'll, There's been I'll, more innovation I'll, since I'll, Elon over than the exactly. whole before. I'll jump yeah, off, but I just want to say thanks to Elon. Since, since the rather embarrassing Ron DeSantis situation. Um, it, it, like, <laughs> it, I mean, I really have to credit the, the you know the X team for making uh, massive improvements to spaces because it, it basically did not work at scale uh, it, 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 until a massive amount of work was put into it. It, it obviously br it broke rather embarrassingly in the Ron DeSantis uh, situation. Um, and we didn't realize how, how fragile and weak it was. And since then, we've put massive work into making spaces actually robust and be able to have, you know, you can have, at this point, millions of people listening simultaneously. 
Um, um, let me be clear, sure, Elon. Difficult to do. Elon, I've never seen an interface that works this good. I mean, you've got a whole uh, how you're doing this, and uh, General Flynn did bring up the best question in the last two hours. So I'm sorry, I was like getting so excited, I interrupted the general. He's absolutely right. We should be challenging them to debate us. I, I agree with you, General. That's really a key point. I'm saying they're too cowardly to do Jack, it. H how do second, we, uh, Jack? Do Jack, Jack, your your mic you muted. I can't mute you, Jack. Uh, but yeah, go ahead. Uh, just quickly, uh, before you continue, Alex, uh, uh, Elon, I don't know if you remember, the, I think the first space you came on and we hit 100K live listeners and it broke, so it wouldn't show. Yeah, true. I don't we're know how you do it, 100, Alex. We're 109,000 right, right yeah. now, 109,000. Yeah, I don't know how you do it, but I know that it's, that it's that we have to do it. We don't have a, I think we, we are in a place where we don't have a choice right now. I think the intellectual arguments on their side, I, I just think that they're going to fall flat and they don't really have a good argument. And Elon mentioned it early on about, you know, how, how much energy it takes to, to lie. I mean, it just does to lie to so many damn people, but we have to pick this fight. We ha it has to be intellectual. Our, our intellectual arguments are much, much stronger. And I just think we have to have the right type of people. And you know, those, those people have been on here today and, and invite these people. I mean, if they're, if they don't want to come, we call them out as cowards. I mean, wait a minute, being poor and everybody, wait a minute, general Flint, hold on a minute. I'm going to call you out right now. Eating bugs, drag queen story time, <laughs> open borders, World War Three. You're saying uh, that's not how you're saying their 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 plan isn't wonderful. <laughs> hey, for a guy that has that has had to eat bugs, Alex, they don't they don't taste very good. So, yeah. <laughs> I'll go one okay. step further. I think we should see a two v two MMA duel between. Elon and Alex versus Klaus Schwab and Bill Gates. I Love think it. that'd be the real. I think Elon should call him out. It'll be the, it'll be bigger than the top UFC fight. If those cowards will show up, my God, it'll be their Waterloo. Elon, 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 you, you know how the media works. Do you want to give? Do you want to call them out, and, and then you'll get that snippet all over the media? Well, I'm certainly um, happy to have a debate uh, with uh, Klaus Schwab uh, and, or, or others. Um, you know, I. I think you guys may have been following what's going on in Davos uh, more than, than I have, or, and certainly more than the vast majority of people have. I think most people don't even know that there is a conference in Davos or the, or the World Economic Forum. Um, and uh, I've, 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 I've only seen snippets, um, but, you know, some of the snippets are concerning. And, you know, I don't, I don't think we should have a sort of an unelected quasi-governmental organization deciding our future. Uh, that's, I mean, who said, who, who made them the boss? I, I, don't, I mean... Do, do people even know that they're doing this? Um, like, they're, I'm, I'm not okay with some organization, you know, in, uh, that I don't vote for controlling, you know, my destiny or that of other people. Um, so, and, and I don't know if they're necessarily fully controlling, but they certainly are influencing things. And, uh, you know, and it's, you know, I, I just don't, <laughs> I think an unelected world government is, is not a good idea. Well, Klaus uh, how, how, how much? Elon, how, how much? But, Elon Musk breaks the internet. Elon, uh, uh, on that point, CJ, I'll go to you right after for a question, then Suleiman. But on, on that point, how much control you, you kind of change it, whether control or influence? Because on one side, you've got people that say you know they control the world; every decision is, is kind of influenced, or, 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 or they They're make that decision behind the, the world. On, on the other, on the other, on the other side, there's the, the people making the argument that they're trying to do the right thing. And things are being taken out of proportion. It's all a conspiracy. Where do you think on that spectrum, um, in your opinion, uh, we stand? Well, I mean, the, the original premise of the World Economic Forum was to have um, a, a, a some kind of forum where where there would be interaction between government leaders and um, commercial leaders, sort of the heads of corporations and governments, and, and th that that there would be some forum for them to talk. Um, and like that original premise, I think is is not a bad one, um, because right now you've got you've got the UN, but but that's just that's just government to government, um, and you've got you know a bunch of sort of individual situations where uh, you know commercial leaders will will meet with with government people one on one. But there's the you know the the, the sort of the good part of the World Economic Forum is like it, it's like it's probably good to have some dialogue between. Uh, commercial leaders and government leaders uh, internationally. That's that's the that's I think the, the the positive side, and that's originally how I heard about the World Economic Forum. And and I was I was invited to speak there many years ago, uh, which uh, I, I was just too busy working, and I was like, well, I, I can't really go spend five days in Switzerland. I I've I've work to do in America. Um, so uh, and and they and they weirdly wanted me to to come talk there, but also pay them twenty thousand dollars. And I'm like. Uh, 
that doesn't make sense. So I declined the invitation. Um, and um, now, now it does, it does seem that since that since inception, perhaps this organization has gained a bit too much power um, and and a bit too much influence. Um, and and I think it probably you know it should have less power and influence, is my opinion. You, Elon, I have a See, quick, Jeremy, quick, 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 quick question. Uh, you tweeted about the imprisonment of the American Chilean Gonzalo Lira in in Kharkiv, Ukraine, yesterday. I'm curious if uh, that imprisonment of an American for speaking his mind on YouTube and X has caused you to consider further support for Ukraine, albeit through Starlink or other means. And also, uh, unrelated to that, can you provide any updates about Starlink for Gaza? Yeah, I mean, I generally think, look, look, uh, I understand that if if somebody, if an American citizen is in another country and violates that, that country's laws or what those countries' laws, even if if their actions would not violate the laws in the United States, that that person would then be put in prison. But in the case of Ukraine, um, the United States is providing an, a, a vast amount of aid to to Ukraine, um, and the United States government has an obligation to protect its citizens. Um, and so I I think uh, even if one disagrees with what uh, you know that that I guess YouTuber or journalist, depending on your perspective, uh, what what they posted, um, I I feel uncomfortable. Uh, sending uh, massive aid to Ukraine if they're putting American citizens in jail for doing videos on YouTube. That's not cool. Um, and it's like, the, and you could say like, okay, well, yeah, but Ukraine has the sovereignty in, in their country. It's like, yeah, but they don't have a right to our money as well. So it's like uh, they don't have a right to our money and support and to, to imprison and mistreat American citizens. Well, well that's right. And look, look, Pick I don't one. have a dog in the fight. Russia, Ukraine, it, it's, a, you know, an old ancient fight between the two countries has been going on for a thousand years. It, it's a Slavic civil war. But Ukraine is arresting the Orthodox Church. Ukraine, even the mayor of uh, Kiev has said Zelensky is becoming a dictator. So all I'm saying is this black hole we're feeding hundreds of billions into, we should at least be able to debate it. And if an American journalist is critical, he doesn't deserve to be put in a gulag. That is very dangerous. I agree, Elon. And as for Starlink for Gaza, yeah, and on, on the Starlink for Gaza front, I mean, obviously that that that, that place is, is currently a war front next level. Um, so the the in, in order for Starlink to be used in, in Gaza, the terminals have to be brought in, and they have to be you know used in a way that, that where it is where, where it is uh, you know there's there's a high degree of certainty that they are not used being used. Uh, for, for any any violence. So now it, there are only a, a, a really two ways to get into Gaza. One is through Egypt and the other is through Israel. Um, so it, it, if there was like uh, a, you know, a situation where say Egypt was willing to let a stalling terminal in and we, that we could have very high certainty that uh, the terminal would not be used for um, any kind of military purposes or, or for violence, then, then we would support that. Um, I, Egypt has not stepped forward to the best of my knowledge in that regard. Um, and, uh, and obviously we're, we're not going to be played for fools here where, you know, if an organization would perhaps pre pretend to be using Starlink for peaceful purposes, but then actually use it for violent purposes, we will, we will, we will basically ask for a webcam on that thing 24 seven. And, uh, and if there's the slightest concern about it being used for, 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 um, violent uh, means, it would, it would be, it would be turned off. So, so that, that's the situation there. I mean, it is, it is a very difficult situation. And. I, I, you know, I, I'm, I am sympathetic to, to, to Israel, but I'm, I, I also, you know, I'm sympathetic to civilians in, 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 in Gaza. So it's but not, it's, I'm, I'm, pro, I'm pro human to be clear. Uh, and you know, so, uh, Elon, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just like, here's the deal. I'm not pro Russian. I'm not pro Ukraine. I hate the war. I'm pro all of them. I agree. But when you learned that they were using Starlink to rig up robot boats, to blow up battleships when Russia said they were going to launch nukes if they did. You didn't sign up Starlink to be a weapon system. It's very fair to say it's my company, it's my... Well, yes. Uh, to be clear, um, the, the, the Crimea and the, and, the, and the sort of sea around Crimea uh, was uh, a, a, an officially sanctioned uh, area by the United States. And we were not actually... The, so the, the Starlink uh, uh, cells were not turned on uh, in in Crimea and the area around Crimea, because of of U.S. law, uh, would prevent us from doing so. Um, the 
there was a Ukrainian um, attempted attack on the fleet in Sevastopol, and I I got an emergency call saying like, hey, we need to turn on the cells um, around uh, Sevastopol. And I'm like, well, that's currently a U.S. sanctions zone. Uh, we would need permission from the U.S. government to do so. Um, and, and in fact, I, I, I don't. And, and it would also mean that we are directly complicit in in, uh, in, a, in an attack on the Russian fleet directly. Now, this is. It wouldn't be. There's no. There's no plausible deniability here. Now, if if uh, even though I'm, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of of President Biden, but if if President Biden had, had called and said, you. You know, I, as as the you know, um, you know, as 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 the president of the United States, I'm asking you to turn the, the cells on. I, I would have done so, um, but we did not get any such call. Um, we were only called by the Ukrainian government, and uh, the Ukrainian government uh, is not my boss. Um, so you know, it's like, and so that we, we can't. Like, it would actually be illegal for 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 me to turn on Starlink cells at the request of a foreign government. In a sanctioned ter- a territory sanctioned by the United States, that would they were setting, be they were a violation of U.S. law. So it's like they were setting you up like sending bad pigs. Yeah, it just it, it, but but the media misrepresented it as as I turned off the cells. This is not true. They were never on. Um, so and and if I had turned them on, I would have broken U.S. law, um, and and I would need an exemption from the State Department and and ex- express written permission from. The president in order to do and to that's why blinken is- yeah so and and i, I do think we, we need to be cautious about escalating the, that war um and we need to find a path to peace um and uh and, and not have not sacrifice the, the the flower of ukrainian and russian youth uh it, it ultimately for for nothing or for, for 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 a few miles of territory which is currently what's been going on for the past year Dealing with the Elon, sentiments, I've got, I've got a question. Let, let me, so yeah, let me, question? let me, let me go to CJ and I'll go to you. Let me go to yeah. CJ and I'll go to you right after. CJ, Mario, hey, Mario, thank yeah, you, Laura, Laura. thank you yeah, so go much. Ahead, CJ. Yeah, thank you so much, Mario, for hosting this. Uh, Elon, my name is CJ Pearson. I'm a 21-year-old conservative activist, and I currently work at Prager University. And General Flynn made a really important point a little bit earlier about how Twitter has made it super accessible um, for conversations like this to happen, debates and discourse. And Alex, I think, also made the point earlier that if you look at the debates and the viewership that they've had, you don't really see them reaching all that many young people via traditional cable channels. And one idea that conservative activists like myself have had, different Gen Z conservative influencers have had, is having a Gen Z moderated debate or town hall with the Republican primary candidates and exclusively streaming it here on X. What would you think about something like that? Do you think that would be a way for America's next generation to hear different ideas that they obviously aren't hearing currently on their college campuses? Uh, well, actually, you know, I, I don't believe in, ex- in, in exclusivity, um, but I think that it, that that not doing it on the X platform it does it ma- makes no sense. It, things should be done on the X platform because it is the most widely accessible uh, platform. It, it it is where you will see it has by far the most reach. The X platform has by far the most reach of anything. Um, you know that that, that you, you know although like I don't this 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 conversation I don't know might top out at maybe a few hundred thousand people live, but it will probably go viral afterwards, and I don't know probably have 10, 10 million. People listen to it, or twenty. Well, we've had Elon, Elon, on, the, on the um, mutiny space. We had eighteen million listeners from memory. Yeah, no, when we did the exactly. Russian so, so, I mean, the way, the way to think of this platform is that there, uh, on an average day, there are over two hundred and fifty million people on the platform. That's an average day. But some some days it's more like three or four hundred million, and a really crazy day could be like five hundred million. So, I mean, we're, we're, we're you know, at, at, at times we're starting to approach ten percent of all humans who are online. Are on the platform. Well, Elon, so it's a very big line, number, <laughs> and Elon. we're not even, and we're obviously not active in China. We, we're, we're, it's not, we're, you know, X doesn't doesn't work in China. It actually, works on international phones, but not domestic phones. And um, and I, I believe it is also uh, does not work in Russia. So, uh, so that's it's more. We're I think we we do exceed ten percent of all all humans uh, at times on this platform. So it seems crazy to ignore this platform. Uh, because then you're just going to reach far fewer people. Well, well, Elon, bottom line here, the proof is in the pudding. You judge the tree by its fruits. You are the only massive platform that's open and free. People are hungry. It's exploding. 
This is the example for the world. And we're trying to stop war. We're trying to create a pro-human future. <coughs> this is what this is really all about. I've been very honored. Uh, uh, Alex, Ali, before, before you're honored, just to give you an idea of how Spaces works, and, and just in the last uh, couple of hours, that was meant to be an interview with you. Then Elon jumped on, Andrew Tate, his brother, we just had Vivek jump on, and Matt Gates just jumped on as well. Loved it. Uh, and Bring that's Gates one, thi one thing with Spaces, you just never know who could come up. Matt, how are you? I'm great. I'm enjoying hearing Elon's perspective on adding value to all of our followerships and uh, allowing us to engage. Your thoughts on Alex Jones being back on the platform? I think it's great. Alex has been uh, someone who's provoked a lot of uh, critical thinking from policymakers and broad audiences. You know, of course, there are things that I'm going to say that would offend people, things that Alex would say that would offend people. But I think they'll just have to be offended. I think it's I think it enriches the discussion to have Alex back. Suleiman? Yeah, I've got a few questions. Um, my first question is we've seen uh, extremely positive steps in terms of the return of Alex Jones. We've seen the return of Andrew Tate. We've seen the return of President Trump. And so X is definitely moving towards a free speech platform. My question is, when will we be able to get to a situation where it's completely free speech and it's just based solely on following the legal laws of the country? I know it's a process and it takes time, but how far do we envision this happening? How far in the future? Well, we're, we're, I mean, I think we've made dramatic progress over the past year. You know, it's only been a year since the, the acquisition closed. Um, and uh, it's been quite difficult to, we, we had to not just keep the wheels on the bus, but upgrade the, the bus whilst going down the highway. While well, Elon's cut out, out, Thomas Jefferson said, we will not be transported to a state of liberty on a feather bed. Go ahead. Is Elon back? Uh, no, I think he's, oh, he might have gotten a call. No, you're back, Elon. Uh, okay, sorry. Um, yeah, I'm just saying it's 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 been you know quite difficult to keep the wheels on the bus um, and and upgrade the bus while going barreling down the highway at 100 miles an hour. So th that's that's kind of where. Thing, but I think we've made tremendous progress in a year, and I, and we'll, I think that progress I, I think is accelerating. Um, so uh, and you know we, we we keep cleaning up the code base and simplifying it and pr providing more transparency and providing. Uh, more clarity and obviously uh, improving freedom of speech and getting closer and closer to the law. And, and I just want to say with respect to the law, I am a strong believer in the law. So you'll, you'll, you'll sometimes read an article where it sounds like I'm some crazy maverick who just likes breaking the law. It's like I, I, I am subject to so many laws that I might be hundreds of thousands of laws, maybe millions. When you think about Tesla and, and SpaceX and Starlink, and, and all the countries that they're in and all the regulatory regimes and all the rules and regulations that we have to adhere, adhere to. And the amazing thing is how, how closely we actually ad, adhere to the law and follow the law and, and do what, what, what countries believe is, is uh, right and legal. And, and, and uh, once in a while, in a very rare case, I might disagree with the law or regulation, um, but we will not willfully violate it. Um, so, uh, or, you know... Um, but, so what I'm trying to say is I'm extremely law abiding. <laughs> Elon, Elon, I, Elon, I totally agree with you. I don't know how you have the energy. People talk about Trump's energy. Your energy is insane. Where does your energy come from? Going back to being a child, did you kind of, because we know the universe is a loop or a figure eight. It doesn't just go in one direction. Did you have inklings of the big things you were going to do? Or when you were a child, did you have any like uh, foresight about what you were going to be doing? No, not really. I, I, I just, uh, you know, I, I liked t technology and like uh, taking devices apart and fixing them and building things. And uh, I, I loved science fiction, fantasy, you know, like Lord of the Rings and Heinlein and Asimov and um, Star Trek and Star Wars. And um, that's and, and I didn't I, th I didn't know what I was going to do. I liked it, like programming computers. I, I found programming computers to be intrinsically interesting. Um, not not because I thought I'd have a job. Actually, I didn't think I'd have a job. I know you could even make money writing computer software, but I was just interested in it in and of itself. So I'd program computers all night by my you know by myself, which is not you know it doesn't appeal to everyone. Uh, that's I think actually quite an unusual thing uh, to to want to sort of type strange symbols into a computer all night essentially by yourself is is a well, not not what most people want to do. But I did I did like doing that, and um, but also like you know hanging out with friends and stuff, but. No, I didn't think this any of this would happen. I, I, I'm just, I would say, I would say I have a philosophy of curiosity, which is that, you know, trying to understand more about the nature of the universe and our place in it. And uh, that's why I studied physics, not not for career reasons, just try, to try to understand how the, the universe actually works and, and what, what has good predictive value. 
and and physics is has got very good predictive value, so that's why I studied it. Um, then give and, us um, give us your give us your your predictive value gut level. Elon Musk, the I mean, this is like beyond any Hollywood movie where we're at right now. Does humanity survive? Gut level, you've got all these great children. That means you bet on humanity. Do we make it to the next level? And what is the next level? Elon, you there? Sorry, while yeah. waiting for. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so you, you, you need one, one needs to think of the, the future as probabilities and not certainties. So that then you know any given action that we do can affect the probability of a good outcome. Um, th there are no certainties uh, I, I, if, that I can determine, or at least I, I, I don't have a crystal ball that can. So we're it. changing the future. Yes, I think by our actions, we, we can individually um, take actions that that improve the probability of a good future. Um, and the furtherance of civilization, and I, th I think we should, you know, take those actions. And um, you know, some of that involves we we, we got to have kids, or there won't be a next generation. Um, and we, we've we've got we've got to you know educate them well. And um, I think you know, like I said, no, no, hold on, let me ask you this. Yeah. Let me ask this question, Elon, because you're you're obviously a genius. We're here talking to you right now. Don't predict the future; be the future. Yes, the the best way to to the best way to to uh, I think, and I forget who came up with this, but the best way to predict the future is to create it. Yes. And, and uh, I do want to, uh, Jason <laughs> Calacanis is here and, and they've started. Yeah, let, me, let me go to Jason quickly, Salam, and I'll go to you in a bit. Uh, Jason, a quick question to you first. Uh, would you have Alex Jones on the All In podcast? Sorry to put you on the spot. Well, um, I have him here now. So would it be okay if I asked him of three course, questions? Please, go ahead. Yeah, but Elon's far Alex. more fascinating. Please ask Elon questions. Jason. Well, Alex, my first question for you is mm. I'm curious if you'd be willing to answer three questions about the Sandy Hook parents. Oh, great. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Well, I mean, you now have your freedom of speech and you're here. So I think a lot of people are wondering what theory or evidence led you to believe <laughs> that that was a fake uh, staged uh, situation. He's already answered these questions. Yeah, every time well, no, I we're here on Facebook for the first time, let's ask him. He already answered I, I, I this like, gonna, like 40 minutes, minutes ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me answer this. Let me answer this. Everything I say is misrepresented. You'll say I'm saying it again. I believe it happened. And I'm sorry. And I apologize. And I'm done. Okay. And so what did you get wrong about that situation? Like what I've led you? Because you you you've investigated these situations many times, right? That's kind of what you do no, as a, a Elon, journalist or an entertainer. And so, what did you get wrong there? And then, Elon, what real world question. harm did it do? Let me answer your question. I respect Elon. I answered his question. I said it's probably the last time I'll ever talk about it. I'm not going to live in Groundhog Day. I believe Sandy Hook happened. I've been through hell over it. I was not the guy that first questioned it. PR firms blew it up and made it my identity. It's not my identity. My identity is human's future, team human, what Elon Musk is doing. I'm never talking about it again. That's your answer. Got it. Okay. So what what would you do differently in the future, you know, when going after some conspiracy theory like this? And do you believe that when you go after these conspiracy theories, they can have real world harm? I.e., you know, your fans knocking on the door. Yeah, of parents. yeah I get it. If I would comment on what people are saying on the Internet, when well, something has 50 million views, I will be blamed for their questioning. So I'm very careful about that now. I didn't realize I had 30 million viewers a day back then because I wasn't looking at the analytics. But yeah, I've, 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 I've learned a lot of lessons that the media and PR firms will misrepresent what I'm saying to then attach themselves to me and play victim. So I'm not talking about it. I won't even say the name of it. I, what I will say is I'm at X right now, and it's blowing up and taking the planet back for humanity. At Real Alex Jones, people should follow it there and hear what I actually say, and I don't talk about the school shooting. That is not who I am. That's what PR firm Yeah, I, I, Jason, I, I should say that the, 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 the Sandy Hook issue was the first thing I raised with, with Alex. He did answer it at length at the beginning of this uh, space's co the conversation. Um, so I think you, you, you may not have heard the... Yeah, no, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't hear the start of it. I was alerted to this at the at, towards the end. You know, I, I think the yeah, issue, it, it, Elon, it, it, candidly, I, I mean, is... I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not commenting on whether I agree or disagree with his answer, but but I, it was the very first thing that I that I asked um, when I got on, on this uh, Spaces conversation, um, just as it was the first thing that you asked. I think it's, the, it's the, you know, for people that, that you know, uh, care about whether there's there's sort of empathy uh, and and whether somebody has been you know, cruel or, or mean or something. That's like the first thing 
they're going to ask about. And so that was the first thing I asked about. Um, and, and it, you know, it, it, it was answered when somebody can agree with that answer or, or, or not. And no matter but, how just, many, you know, I, I, I did ask it. No matter how many times I answer it, it's never good enough because I'm that guy. I'm not what they said. I covered the internet questioning it. I've already said, I'm sorry over 500 times, three or four times today, but it's always the same question. I'm not that guy. I won't even say the name of it. Yeah. I, I, I think people actually will eventually get tired of you answering the question. Um, and um, what is that? 5, I, 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 I think for, for someone who started out, this, who's listened to the whole spaces, they probably are actually tired of you answering the question, to be frank. I certainly am. Patrick, are you there? Patrick, are you there? I am. Can you hear me? We can, yes. Fantastic. I, I don't have any questions. I just have a comment to make. Uh, the, the biggest thing is, and I, saw, I heard Jason's question, and I know Alex answered it at the beginning with Elon. Opening it up with him, uh, I had Alex on. I don't know, Alex, it was a couple months ago or something you were on. We had a great exchange together. The best part about this is the following. Uh, I applaud Elon uh, for... You know, the fact that, you know, just a few months ago, he said he's not going to have uh, uh, Elon, uh, he's not going to have Alex on. And then after seeing what the audience wants, the survey comes to 7030 and keeping that commitment for allowing Alex to be on. Uh, the, the people who have different strong opinions, who are humanists, who want to defend freedom of speech, defend the same rights that we have, we're finding each other. And I just want everybody to remember this. Go back to September of 2022. When Professor Galloway said, Elon is full of it, he's not going to buy it, he's toying with all of you. And then Elon bought the company, whatever the price uh, of the company was, some said it was 50% more, it was a $20 billion company, $30 billion company. He paid the entire number, he didn't have to do this. If that purchase wasn't to be made, think about where America would be today. I want everybody to think about that part. It's been 13 months since then. It's pissed a lot of people off. The fact that, Elon, I applaud you for standing up to folks who... You're saying what you're saying to advertisers, where what do you have to do? Be a slave to them? They have to constantly put that fear in you. We applaud you. You got a lot of people backing you up. Alex, it's great to have you back on. Um, pushing the envelope, you could be wrong. Everybody could be wrong. It's not like all of us are always right. We have the ability to be wrong. And when we are, and people can challenge us and move on, and you know, then they can make a decision. Either look, I don't like Alex or I like Alex. Great, no problem. That's the freedom of, you know, you have to pick and choose to like somebody's views or not. But the biggest factor here is somebody had the courage to use their resources to buy a platform like this to give everybody else the freedom to debate to argue to give their thoughts to give their opinions and then at the same time if you're wrong you admit to it if you're not you stick to your guns but best part on what's going on to the world right now is we are finding each other the fighters are finding each other and that has got to be a very scary thing to people who oppose the concept of freedom of speech so I have no question for Alex. I have no questions for Elon. I just wanted to jump in and applaud everybody, even those who debate, even those who agree, even those who disagree. Future looks bright. The right people are finding each other. And uh, I applaud all of you. That's all I wanted to say. So, Patrick, beautifully said, brother. My man. Remember, Patrick, I, just, I apologize for Sandy Hook on your show five years ago. I remember, that. Remember, that, I remember that. I remember that. Patrick, qu question for you then. You've been here a few times and you've applauded Spaces and X. When is the show? I think you've got 2 million subscribers on YouTube. When will the X version launch? When will the X version launch? I, I, I've I never had a conversation with Elon. Uh, we've never had a sit down. I, I totally support what they're doing. Right now what we're doing is we're starting to upload uh, all our episodes on uh, X uh, as well as we're putting on other platforms. But the direction this is going with a few asks that was made where we can now watch the video on 2.0 speed. I'm a 2.0 speed guy. X I like marks the spot. X I, marks the spot. X is it. No, I, I totally see it going that direction. But uh, no, I mean, look, it's it's look what's going on right now. Look at this live. How many people are on right now? I don't know what the number is. Hundred and hundred and eighteen thousand. Hundred and eight. Hundred and nineteen thousand on a Sunday. Where I'm sitting in my backyard right now, watching my four kids play soccer, and we're able to jump on and have a conversation like this. This is insane. The power of what's going on with this. This is uh, the future. I, I think this is just the beginning, and the right guy is driving it. So, future looks bright. Sev? Yeah, this question is for uh, Mr. Musk and Mr. Gates. Uh, so, during the 2020 election cycle, we saw a lot of people be either deplatformed or noted for making claims of election fraud. Now, at the time that those claims were made, 
it, there was no way of knowing they were true or untrue because they hadn't been litigated yet. So going forward, as we're coming into a new election cycle, uh, Mr. Gates, is there anything being done legislatively or in the House to ensure that that doesn't happen again? And the same question would go to Mr. Musk. Thank you. The, the strongest, I think, uh, influence on that censorship regime right now is the Missouri v. Biden you know, litigation and the injunctions there that are being resolved and uh, some sort of the public humiliation we've put some of the senior DOJ and FBI leadership through as they've had to fess up to the nature of some of these emails and contacts. You know, we've we've brought you know, the journalists that have been covering this, you know, Schellenberger and Taibbi forward to kind of repeatedly try to set that deterrent. But I, I think that it's, it's not just about election. It can be about uh, any number of the things that the federal government wants to control the four corners of discourse on. And you know, these are the people who would have like, you know, would have banned Galileo. And yet when people uh, want to share evidence or experiences or concerns, uh, you, you can't have the Department of Homeland Security and CISA uh, working alongside NSA and FBI uh, on, on those projects. Otherwise, uh, people start to fear that if they're not proactively censoring, that they run afoul of some sort of legal regime. And, and it's also sickening if you just track the extent to which uh, a lot of these se senior lawyers oscillate back and forth between big tech and uh, the senior positions in our government that decide these things. So Republicans in the House should be taking a stronger stand, in my view. We should be uh, putting riders on the funding for CISA and FBI so that uh, you know anything that would occur there would be so clearly outside the law that it would draw sanction. But instead, we, are, we continue to govern by these continuing resolutions that don't gate uh, resources away from that censorship. Well, actually, Congressman Gates, the, the fact you mentioned that uh, about the FBI and CISA, this has been the huge thing that's come out of the Twitter files. And it's it was a two way street. So while you're tracking what the government was doing in 2020 vis-a-vis -vis censorship, really leaning on regards to the Hunter Drive laptop, which we released in October of 2020. This is actually a huge question for X going forward into 2024, because Elon, you've said that you want to be in, uh, you know, working in conjunction with within the confines of the law. But the question is, if that law is being enforced by the law enforcement agency of the FBI or the DHS, and then they come to X and say, these posts need to be censored, this information needs to be censored because we've determined whatever it is, you know, how does X make that determination? Well, if, if, we, if we believe that something is, is not in accordance with the law, then we will ask a, a, a judge or jury to um, make a decision. Um, I so, been yeah. here. We, 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 don't, we, we don't have much of, of it. That, that is the best we can do. Um, so, uh, and, and I, I just want to be... You just cut out again, Elon. You got a call. Oh, sorry. Oh, you're, um, back. you're back. Yeah. Uh, I just want to be clear that the X platform will aspire to be as neutral as possible. Um, and, uh, you know, that's... That, that's and, and to be as open and transparent as possible... I, I, I think we, we will be. I think we will achieve maximum transparency. I think I think we'll be. I think we'll be fully transparent. Um, you know, hopefully by early next year. But but, but we, I, I would. I, I'm 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 confident we'll be be fully transparent by the by the time the, the there is a, a, an election next year. So that, like basically, people will just see anything that is happening on the system, and and nothing will be hidden. That is the goal. Well, if 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 those agencies though, the FBI, the DHS, etc., if they reach out. 2x were i believe they called it defensive briefings in 2020 regarding which eventually culminated in the censorship of hunter biden if they started reaching out again would that be something that you or the team and and no i can understand if you don't want to answer now but you would consider making public we, we will be as transparent as as, po as possible with uh with that you know the, yeah and, and frankly if, if 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 i if i think a, a government agency is breaking the law in their demands on the platform. I would, I would be prepared to go to prison personally if if I think they are they are the ones uh, breaking the law. Redhead and then Alex and Benny. Great, thank you. Um, hi everyone, I'm Josie. I'm the redheaded libertarian and X, and I'm a revolutionary historian, and I do outside media work at TimCast.com. I just wanted to jump back. Um, to X as a free speech platform. Elon had mentioned constitutional speech will be protect protected. And um, there's some confusion as to what that constitutes, um, constitutional speech. So I, I just wanted to help kind of clarify that for some listeners who might have questions. Um, 
So the speech and expression, which are not given protections in America under the First Amendment, include incitement, defamation, fraud, obscenity, CP, fighting words, and true threats. The government does have power to make blanket regulations on speech, including time, place, manner. That's usually done in the form of permits. Uh, And when it comes to slander and libel, those are defamation adjacent and need to be proven as there's no such thing as a false opinion under the First Amendment, only a false fact. Um, But many times by the time the due process is through, the damage has already been done. I mean, we saw that with uh, the Me Too movement, particularly with Justice Kavanaugh. We saw that with Alex Jones, the Tates, Nick Sandman, Kyle Rittenhouse, where um, the kind of propaganda machine took over and, um, and, and, and truth was lost for a period of time. Uh, so when it comes to obscenity, that's the hardest constitutional violation to prove uh, when it comes to the expression of that, because it's it has kind of a standard of I, I know it when I see it. So there is something called the Miller test uh, to determine whether something is deemed um, legally extreme. So I, I hope that that helps. Yeah, so we're not doing drag queen story time here. We're not calling for violence. We're not hacking websites. We're promoting freedom. That's why we're censored. Yes, exactly. Alex? Yes. Uh, hi, I just Alex. wanted to. Hey, Alex. <laughs> no, you're good. Uh, I just wanted to thank Elon for his commitment to free speech, reinstating Alex. Of course, welcome back. Um, and I just wanted to, I think it was Mark Dice earlier who raised this um, with Owen Schroyer's ban. I just wanted to note that it, it didn't have anything to do with the InfoWars thing. Um, it actually had to do with the fact that he called for people to come to a rally. And uh, Media Matters actually did a hit piece, and they said that it would violate uh, Texas's social distancing order. So that's how they actually got him banned, was through a Media Matters hit piece. So in response, uh, Twitter 1.0 banned him. So I just wanted to get any thoughts on that. Well, it's perfect timing. Elon, maybe you can also give us a, a, an update if there is any uh, on Media Matters and why you decided to do them. Yeah, M- Media Matters is an evil propaganda machine. Um, so I, I just generally uh, am against evil propaganda machines. And uh, so we are suing them in every country that they operate. And we'll, we will pursue not just the organization, but anyone funding that organization. I want to be clear about that. Anyone funding that organization, uh, will be, we will pursue them. Um, so uh, Media Matters is an evil propaganda machine. Um, they can go to hell. I hope they do. So, Based. yeah. Um, Benny? So, oh, I, 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 I actually, I, I, I need to, I, you know, it's just uh, step off the call at this point. Um, so, I just have some family obligations. Um, but uh, I think it's been certainly a very interesting conversation. <laughs> I suspect this will go viral. Probably snippets of it will go viral in, in a way that don't entirely represent the situation. I, I hope that uh, anyone who uh, reads about it or hears about it actually just it takes the time to listen to the entire uh, Spaces conversation. Uh, it will be saved. I suspect there will be probably many millions, if not tens of millions of, of people listening to the conversation. I, I just hope that they listen to the whole conversation and not, not just uh, small parts of it. Um, Elon, I totally agree. Let me just say, thanks for reinstating me. I'm going to do the best job to not be misrepresented. I uh, thank you. And I thank you for the freedom you're promoting, the pro-human future. We're on Team Humanity. Thanks for spending two hours with us plus. And this has just been surreal. It's 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 really been amazing. So X is where it's at. Thank you, Elon Musk. You're welcome. Um, like I said, I'm you know very much in, in favor of the, the supporting the in the United in, in the United States the laws and constitution of the United States. And I think if if, if we if we start uh, you know eroding uh, if, if, if we erode freedom of speech, uh, we erode the, the foundation of democracy. The it, the 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 bedrock of democracy is freedom of speech, and we must do everything we possibly can to protect that. Thank you. Well, well, thank you, Elon, for all the time, and I want to thank this whole crew. I'm going to be posting a lot of stuff at Real Alex Jones on Twitter. People should follow us there, and this has been the most epic interview ever. I love this new Spaces system, and uh, it's just good to have my identity back so I actually say what I actually said versus him misrepresenting. I'm not perfect, but... God bless you all, and I really appreciate Elon Musk and everybody else that is promoting free speech. That says we don't have free speech, we have nothing. Want more content? Early access? 
bunch of perks, click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 has given me a massive meaningful boost in energy, allowing me to do a lot more every day, including using my brain more and using my body more. I highly recommend you guys and girls check it out. It's an excellent way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's got 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients, plus prebiotics and probiotics and digestive enzymes and adaptogens to help you deal with stress. Plus, if you click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR, you can get yourself a one year free supply of vitamin D3 and K2. But don't take my word for it. Here's what some of you guys and girls have to say. AG1 has changed my life. I was, as you described, treating myself like a circus. I ate like trash, rarely exercised, used alcohol as a stress crutch, cannabis also. AG1 is what gave me the kick in the ass, got me back to the gym, motivated me to do more for myself, family, my business, etc. Keep doing what you do. Now, I know there's some skeptics, the same kind of people who think Elon Musk is a fraud, reading this going, what do you thought? There's no way that's possible, bro. It must be a placebo effect. Believe it or not, this is a recurring theme. If you give your body everything it needs to feel and perform its best, including having a lot more energy, you'll need ways to use that energy. For me personally, that includes more exercise, moving my body more, more social activity, and more cognitively demanding tasks, including producing a fuck ton of exclusive content over on Twitter and on Patreon, plus my daily YouTube uploads. The proof's in the pudding. On to another testimonial from a viewer of this channel. SMR, you asked me to provide feedback on AG1. Here it is. It has helped with mental acuity, stamina, and intestinal waste management. Uh, can't read between the lines. It certainly helps with regularity and digestion. That's what the digestive enzymes are for. It has also dramatically reduced my cravings for sugar. You guys need to stop eating sugar. It's fucking poison. I'm 50, 5'9", and overweight, aka a fat motherfucker. I think that's a technical term for overweight, isn't it? Is it fat motherfucker or obese? I can't remember. I average 100 hours a week in the West Texas oil fields as a safety supervisor. Jesus Christ, dude. No wonder you're struggling to keep your weight under control. 100 hours a week. Brutal. It has helped me lose weight. It is not an appetite suppressant. It can help fat people suppress cravings and motivation to be healthier is critical for changing your diet. Love you, brother. Again, this is a great point. It's something people really don't seem to grasp. If you have more energy, everything becomes easier. It's like turning on easy mode for life. A few years ago, before I was taking AG1, my health was trash. I was struggling to get through the day, had afternoon fatigue. The last thing I wanted to do was either use my brain or move my body. Didn't have the energy. Now, my biggest struggle every day is figuring out ways to use that energy. I'm exercising way more, doing a lot more with my friends and family, and of course, my work output has increased substantially. And you can fact check me. Check out the average length of my videos I was posting to YouTube three years ago. Need I say more? And one final testimonial. Love this one. Okay, here's the deal for me with this AG1 shit. I'm 41 years old and not the type to eat, drink, smoke, or sleep healthy, so I was skeptical. That being said, here's what I experienced. Day one, meh. Day two, afternoon fatigue was about 45 minutes late. Day three, zero afternoon fatigue. Day four, zero afternoon fatigue plus extra energy. Day five, again, zero afternoon fatigue plus energy. Wondering, what the fuck, really? See, this is the thing, right? The results for many people are just almost too good to be true. This, this is the same experience I had. My afternoon fatigue just vanished out of nowhere. I'm like, wait, what the fuck? Why am I not tired in the afternoons anymore? Surely, it's not that AG1, is it? Turns out it was. Day six and seven, same thing. Day eight, same thing. Plus, I had the want to get things done around the house that I normally would slack off and not get done. Again, the point, extra energy, you'll need to use it, you'll find ways to use it. Day 9, 10, and 11, and today is day 12. I fucking love it. So however you managed to get me to buy it, I'm so glad you did. Thank you so much, SMR. It really changed me so far. Guys, this shit really works. Just try it. By the way, this is the reason I continue to relentlessly promote AG1. A lot of people get real fucking mad in the comments. Oh my god, snake oil salmon sold out. Oh my god, he's a scammer. This is fraud. But Constantly... I'm pretty sure everyone making these comments is also currently short Tesla stock. I'm not particularly concerned about people having a negative perception, those folks suffering from small brain syndrome, still living in my bum's basement syndrome, etc., writing mean comments, claiming AG1's a scam or it doesn't work. I mean, bro, when I get feedback like this, this is what keeps me going. Just try this stuff for a month, and if you don't get these results, get your money back. See, it's a literal no-brainer. It's an IQ test at this point in time. Testimonial after testimonial after testimonial like this. Get your money back if it doesn't work. Just try it for a month, and if it doesn't work get your money back. Today's the day. It's finally time. Be like this guy who was a massive skeptic, but finally, after a thousand promotions in a row, caved in, tried AG1, and has results like this. Head to drinkag1.com slash SMR, or click the link at the pinned comment, and please, let me know how you're feeling in a few weeks' time. But now, if you'll excuse me, time to put my extra energy to good use. I'll be recording some more exclusive content for Patreon and my Twitter subscribers. So click the link at the pinned comment, see you over on Twitter and or Patreon, and don't forget to grab your AG1. Love ya.